topic. Let me turn this music down. Thanks for joining me. I hope everybody's doing well and uh, everybody's safe and everybody's healthy. All right, let's get into this. So why you can't take it from the practice tee to the golf course, all right? And if that doesn't get your attention, I don't know what does, okay? All right. <clears throat> in this broadcast, I'm going to share with you some insight on what you can do to take your game from the practice area to the golf course. This segment will change the way you train forever. And it's going to change your game because this is what we do, all right? If we've never met before, I'm Sean Humphreys. I'm a high-performance coach. I specialize in changing performance in individuals. How cool is that? Whether you're a highly skilled athlete or you're on your way to being one or you just want to improve your performance, you're in the right place, all right? So make sure you can hear me. Give me a little thumbs up. Give me a little love. Share this with somebody. Pass it on. And uh, man, we want to we want to help as much have as many people as we possibly can with EPS in this training. Okay, all right. Uh, also, uh, type in your questions, and also know that this is being broadcast on our YouTube channel tonight for you YouTubers out there, and the rebroadcast will be available as well. And uh, and I'll circle circulate the broad, rebroadcast back to you. Ask the questions; it helps a lot. All right. Let's dive into this. So, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard this saying, okay? Sean, I hit it great on the practice tee, but when I get on the golf course, I'm a complete wreck. I'm a different person. My game goes south. Does this ever happen to you? You're probably shaking your head, okay? And let me ask you this. Does this happen to you? You hit it really well on the golf course, but you can't putt a flip, all right? Your putting's all over the place. Or your short game is really good, and you can't make four-footers, okay? Or you miss the green, and you can't get up and down to save your life, all right? Or you're hitting your driver down the middle of the fairway, and you can't hit a green in regulation, all right? or you can't hit a green in regulation and you can't get up and down, or it's always one or the other, or you can't hit a fairway, all right? Or you play well on the front nine and the back nine's like you've never even touched a golf club before in your life. Or you play horrible on the front line nine like you've never played before, and on the back nine you're a whole new person, you can't miss a shot, you can't miss a putt. Has that ever happened to you? You post a high score one day and you almost want to quit the game. You throw in the clubs in the trunk. You almost want to throw them in the lake. And the next day you come out and it's like you can't miss a shot. Right? You with me? All right? So meet Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, that's what that really is. That's, that's the Jekyll and Hyde of the game, right? So why does this game do this to me? Why does this happen? I can hit the ball great on the driving range and I pound ball after ball days and weeks, three to four days a week. I hit them great and I know that when Saturday comes around my game is going to go to hell and especially at nine, on that nine o'clock tea time it's going to go to the shiitake, right? Okay, or the next event that I play in, I'm hoping that it changes. But unfortunately, this, this vicious cycle just keeps really repeating itself over and over again. Or I go take lessons two, two or three times a month from my, my swing coach, and I, I hit it great in lessons, and I do really well in lessons. And when I get on the golf course, it goes to junk. Does this ever happen to you? Okay. What's crazy is, is that we keep repeating this crazy cycle. And we hope it's going to change. And we hope it's going to change after every round. But we keep making up excuses of 
what it doesn't, and it's never, the finger's never pointed at us, other than, you know, it, we never ask, okay, what am I doing, okay? And everyone's talking about what they did wrong, and very few people talk about what they did well. Uh, that's a fact, and only the ultra-elite athletes do. Oh, and everyone starts talking about their golf swing, right? And what's going on in their golf swing, and why I hit this shot left, or why I hit this shot right, or why I miss this putt. I mean, everybody gets, starts going to the technical piece, and the next thing you know, you're so technically bound, you can't even think. And then everybody starts talking about, oh, I gotta go work on this drill, I gotta do this drill, I gotta work on this drill. Or I'm gonna go, I gotta go run to my, my swing teacher, or to my swing coach, and then we start this whole cycle over and over again every single week, every single month, every single quarter, every single year. Okay, this is exhausting, okay, right? Do I finally have your attention, all right? That's what I'm looking for, all right? So, do you want to change this vicious cycle that you're on? That you go to the golf course and you, you don't have a clue what you're doing out there. Okay. You go to the practice tee and it's somewhat okay and but on the but on the golf course it's crazy. Okay. All right, let's talk about this, okay? The first piece that I want to talk about is the self-image. And if you've watched any of our lectures, I'm always talking about the self-image. The self-image is the most important piece of how we operate and whether it's like us to do it or not like us to do it. And first of all, where you're at right now, it's not like you to do it on the golf course. It's not, okay? And I'm sorry, but that's the fact of the matter. And here's the reason why, is your self-image is the sum of your habits and your attitudes. It's your area of comfort that we like to operate in, okay? And everybody has it. Every time we get outside that area of comfort, it pulls us back and we retract to where we're comfortable. Okay? Bottom line. Okay? So, why is your self-image saying it's unrealistic about you, to, about you doing what you need to do on the golf course? Why is that? Because you don't train your self-image to do it. That's why. It's not like you to do it because you don't ever train to do it. It's that simple. Why do Olympians win gold medals? Because they train for four years and they grow their self-image so much. They're growing their skill set, they grow their knowledge piece, and they grow their self-image and it becomes like them to win gold medals. It's that simple. Okay? Most of the time we're beating up our self-image what we think about, what we talk about, what we write about improves the probability of that thing happening. Most of the time we're beating up our self-image and talking about how bad it was, how bad the performance was, what you did wrong. We're making mental errors all day long. Okay? But however, it's like you to do it on the practice tee and in the practice area. Why? Because that's where you go to. That's what you do. You do it on the practice tee. You really don't do it on the practice tee. You just kind of randomly and aimlessly go about it and hit balls and take lessons and work on it, get a nice pat on the back, hey, you're doing great, and yada, yada, yada. And, and then when you go to the golf course, it just goes to hell in the handbasket. Okay? So let's think about this in the simplest context. Okay? Let's talk about what goes on in a round of golf. Not what goes on in your training, okay? I already know what goes on in your training, and it's nothing. Nothing goes on in your training, okay? I've been doing this for a long time, gang, and I've seen, I've seen it all. Nothing's going on in your training. But let's talk about what goes on in a round of golf, okay? So first of all, before we play a round of golf, we have to build a strategy for each hole that we're going to play. So we get up on the first hole, and such as 
okay, the distance of the hole is this, and I'm going to hit my tee shot a particular distance and where I'm going to hit it there, and that's going to leave me a particular distance into the green, and that's going to leave me, for instance, a seven iron, and I'm going to hit the seven iron into the middle of the green, and I'm going to two putt or better, and move on. What I just did was just build a strategy for the hole that I'm getting ready to play. It's pretty simple. You got the scorecard, you got the yardage guide. It tells you you should be able you should be able to map that. I mean that's what we do, right? Okay. This is just building the strategy for the hole. My question to you: Do you do this in your train? Okay. Number two. Now I'm going to build a strategy for the tee shot that I'm getting ready to hit. Okay, I'm on the first hole. I'm going to build a strategy for the tee shot. And then I'm going to actually rehearse the exact move that I plan to use to execute this shot. Do you do that in training? Number three. My next shot could be an approach shot that requires a strategy, right, with an iron or maybe even a hybrid, and I have to build that strategy and commit to it, and then I have to rehearse that exact shot again before I execute it. I'm rehearsing it so I can commit to it. Do you do this in training? Number four, you hit the green in regulation. That's the goal, right? Hit the green in regulation. And let's say that you're 40 feet away, okay? And this long distance putt requires building a strategy and looking at the green and reading the green and building the strategy and committing to the strategy and rehearsing the exact shot that you're going to execute with that shot. Do you do that in training? Number five, if you miss the green, okay, now it requires you to have a chip shot or a pitch shot that's next to the green that requires a strategy, and you have to rehearse the exact stroke that you're going to use so that you can commit to the shot and confidently execute the shot, but we have to rehearse that so that we get it just right so we can commit to it. Do you do this in training? Or you chip the ball up about four feet away, nice chip shot, and this putt requires a strategy, and it also requires you to commit to it, and you've got to rehearse the exact stroke that you're going to use on that four-foot putt to execute that putt. Do you do that in training? Every element that we're discussing here on the golf course should be done in training. Everything that you're doing in training should be on the golf course. It shouldn't be any different if you want to change your performance. Okay? So these are actual imprints that we're talking about. Just building a strategy is an imprint. Committing to the shot and rehearsing the exact shot that you want to hit, that's an imprint. And after you execute the shot, the reinforcement phase, that's part of our training, that's an imprint. But everything that you do is an imprint. So every element that we're discussing here that we just talked about should be done in training. Okay? It's important to, so when we talk about building a strategy, okay, you should be building strategies on all your shots in your training and rehearsing the exact movement that you're going to use on the shot that you're going to execute. You should be rehearsing that, okay, this is a par five that, or a par four that I'm going to play and this is how far the hole is and this is where I'm going to hit my driver and this is how far I'm going to hit it and I build the strategy and I rehearse it and commit to the strategy and I execute that shot. You should be doing that in your training. 
and then you should be playing the hole. Then after that, it's like, okay, now I hit that, that driver here. All right, now I've got seven iron into the green. You should be building a strategy and training to execute that shot for the golf course in that setting. And you should be doing this on your distance wedges and your irons and your short game and rehearsing all of these shots in your short game just like you would on the golf course. Everything that you would do on the golf course is what you should do in training. I see, I see athletes all the time working on their short game. They never finish it out. They're just hitting balls up there around the flag or, you know, six, seven, eight feet away. And they never go up to take the flag out of the green, mark the ball, build the strategy, and finish it out. Because that's what we do on the golf course. Why wouldn't we do it in training? I mean, tell me, why wouldn't we? Now, here's the thing is that, you know, they do it in all the other sports, right? I mean, they do it in football. They do it in basketball. They do it in baseball. They do it in volleyball. They do it in lacrosse. They're rehearsing everything that they're going to do for game time. Golf's got it all backwards. We don't rehearse anything for the golf course. You know, I think it's great that you have simulators, and if you have a simulator, I mean, that's what you're doing, is you're simulating what you're doing. And that's what we should be doing in our training. We should be simulating the exact thing that we're going to do on the golf course. Athletes that I work with, I mean, we do this all the time with simulating, okay, on your putting, right? Our athletes start with four footers. That's the first thing they start with every single day. And every athlete that I've worked with, they'll tell you, first thing I start with is four footers. I build a strategy and I commit to the strategy. They run the mindset program. They run their six steps of performing. But we're just talking about just learning how to train. And they do that for 50 minutes on four footers. Why? Because they're going to have a lot of these four-footers in a round of golf. And that four-footer is going to be the final stroke that determines what you make on the hole. And it's pretty important. And what if I told you this, is that the athletes that we work with, these athletes are averaging close to 50 every time they work on their, their four-footers. 50 in a row. And people say, oh, well, that's impossible. Well, no, we train for the impossible. Not impossible. I got athletes making 200. I have one athlete make 330 in a row from five feet. Took her three hours and 15 minutes. Now, I'm not saying you go to that extreme, but you've got to get out and work on your putting. But it's got to be rehearsed just like you would do it on the golf course. And your distance putting. You know, you're not spending any time on your distance putting at all. It needs to be from 30 feet, and you've got to work on it. You've got to build the strategy. you got to commit to the strategy, and you've got to commit to the shot. You've got to rehearse the exact shot that you're going to use. You're probably having three, four, five, three putts in a round of golf. I mean, I kind of know the numbers. You're probably having anywhere from three to five three putts, okay? All right? You're missing... At least 60 to 60 70 percent of your four footers. Okay, your up and down percentages on the golf course are about 30 percent. Add those up, that's where the scores are. Now, imagine if you start training for outcome, okay, in your training. You're finishing these four footers out, you're building the strategies, you're finishing your distance putts out. You're working on like you're on the golf course. So this is what happens. This is the number one thing that will happen to you when you do this. The number one thing. Your self-image will start growing. That it's becoming like you to make these four-footers. Why? Because you're training on what you need to do. It's becoming like you to do it. 
Yes, it's like me to do that. You work on your distance putting and you start getting really good at your distance putting and finishing them out, it starts becoming like you to do that. The self-image grows. And when you get on the golf course, the self-image says, yes, it's like me to do this. It's because this is how I train. And you work on your short game the same way. And when you get on the golf course and you have a situation where you've got to get up and down, the conscious mind pictures the shot, okay? The self-image or the, the, the conscious mind sees the shot, okay? The conscious mind pictures what, or the self-image pictures what the conscious mind sees. The conscious mind pictures the shot, okay? Or sees the shot, and the self-image pictures what it sees. And it says it's like you to do this. Why? Because you're training to do this. It's not complicated, folks. It's really not. We We've just got it bass backwards the way this game is freaking taught and trained and coached. It's so archaic and antiquated that we don't train like we are for the golf course. And we do it in every other sport around, around the globe. And if you, if what I would do is I would break down your game on the golf course, just like I did there. I gave you all the, all the things that you're going to do on the golf course. Every single one of them. You're going to build a strategy for the golf course. If it were me, and I'm going to go play tomorrow, I'm going to rehearse my round of golf tomorrow. Why? Those are imprints towards my self-image. I'm going to rehearse it so it becomes like me to do it. And then when I get up on the first tee tomorrow, I've rehearsed it. I know what the yardage is. I know where the wind's coming from. All I'm doing is confirming and, 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 and affirming that, okay, the hole's this distance. This is where I'm going to hit it, and it's going to leave me this into the green. I'll have that into green, and I'll two-putter better and move on. The more you imprint what it is what, that you want to do, your self-image grows. And when your self-image grows, you start breaking barriers. And so what happens is, is that when your self-image starts to grow, you don't even know what it will do to you on the golf course. Because you really don't even know that it grows in, until you get into a situation. And it starts becoming, starts becoming like you to do it. So if you want it to become like you to do it on the golf course, it has to become like you to do it in your training. It's not going to change other than that. I can tell you that right now. I've been living it and breathing it day in and day out. Right? And I can tell you all the stories about all of our athletes. Okay? That when they grow their self-image, it's magical. Absolutely magical. You don't have to spend all the time working on the technical stuff. You don't. I'm just telling you, you don't have to. All you got to do is just go with what you got, learn to trust and commit to it, and grow the self-image so it becomes like you to do it, and you'll get it. So I, these stories that we have are, are, are pretty crazy, right? So I had the student that uh, was working with uh, this past, this last fall, and uh, she's getting ready to go to um, university. And so I started working with her in November of last year. And uh, her first, she was going to be a freshman in college in, in August. She's, she was in our onboarding program. Her personal best when I got her was 74. Okay. And so she's following our training, following all the protocols, all the things that we're talking about right here that she's doing on the golf course, she's doing in training and preparing for competition, okay? So she'd never played in um, a three-day AJGA event before. And that's kind of the cream de la creme of the junior tour, right? So we were building strategies, getting ready for this event, and she's ready to go. And so the first round she goes out and shoots 71. 
and new personal best, right? How pretty cool. So your thinking is, is after the 71, what kind of self-correction is there going to be, right? That self-image correction. 71, is it going to be a 78? Is it going to be a 79? You're thinking that it's going to be a higher number, and that's what it typically is. After you shoot a personal best, then it's a almost a personal worst. So we prepared, got for the, ready for the second round. Second round, 65. Yep, 65. Holy cannoli. So we prepped for the final round, we put everything in place. And so now you're thinking, okay, there's going to be a self-image correction, right? And she's been training for like nine months in this stuff, right? So the final round comes around, she finishes it, final round, 73, okay? She wins the event by 13 shots, okay? So we're talking. I said, you know, your 65 was, was amazing. But I said, you know what was extraordinary? Was your final round 73. She's like, coach, how's that? Why, why is the 73 so extraordinary? I said, because that's the amount that your self-image is now going to correct. And she's like, holy cow, I had no idea. And that 73 was her third personal best, right? Okay. She goes, I had no idea my self-image was growing. I said, you don't. You don't know whether it's growing or shrinking. You only know what it does to you in a situation, in a high-stress situation, or in a situation that you've got to make confident decisions and you've got to pull the trigger and it's either like you to do it or it's not. And she's like, oh my gosh, so that's how all this training works. I'm like, that's how this training works. It's about growing your self-image. She's like, wow, that's crazy. So she goes into her freshman year. She wins four times. I believe he shot, she shot under par like eight times or ten times in the fall last fall. She moved to number one in the country. She had no ranking whatsoever. And here's the caveat. I never saw her in person. That's why all our, our onboarding athletes, I never see them in person. I train them remotely. That's some crazy stuff, all right? You can do this stuff, this stuff that we just talked about tonight. You follow these steps and you start working on what we're talking about in creating the situations that you do on the golf course, that you do in your training, and I promise you're going to do your training. And if you don't mind, I'd like to offer you something this evening, okay? For the next 90 days, I've got a three-month training program that you can get, okay? All the stuff that we're talking about right here, training for the golf course, training for competition, you can get. You can message me, or you can shoot me an email at sean at seanhumphreys.com. You can give me a call on my direct line at 972 793 7255 and let's have a discovery call around this. I know we're all isolated right now and this is a perfect time to do home training. I have been on the phone with all the athletes for the last several weeks. Everybody has their home training all set up. They've got all their training tools. We help to get them in place and they're not missing a beat on their training right now. And I encourage you to think that because competition is going to come back on board we don't know when it's going to, probably June or July. Probably June is going to be my guess. And when it does, you're not going to have much of a notification. And are you going to be caught floundering going, oh my gosh, I've got a tournament in five days and I haven't been working on my game? I assure you, our athletes in our training right now, they're training right now as we speak. And we have all the home training set up for them. Some of them still have access to the golf course, okay? But the ones at home, We've got that training and also the ones that have access to the golf course. They're preparing for the next competition up here because it's like them to do that. They're growing their self-image. And if you want to be a part of that, I can help you stay prepared. And so when competition comes back on board, you will be ready for competition as well. Give me a shout at 972-793-7255 
or you can reach me at Sean, Sean at SeanHumphreys.com or message me on Facebook and we'll chat and we'll create a, a discovery call and have some conversations around it. I hope you've enjoyed this segment as much as I have enjoyed putting it together for you. Go out and work on your game. Prepare for the golf course in the practice area and you're going to change your game. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next Wednesday for another broadcast.